Hi everyone, my name is Tammy Davis and I want to thank you for joining me today on um, the YouTube channel. If you're new to my channel, um, please consider subscribing um, and know how much I appreciate you at least checking things out. If you've been here with me for a while or even just recently subscribed, thank you for being here as well. Um, I appreciate you all very much. And um, so just a little bit about me. I am I'm an expert in essential oils. I've been practicing and working with them and studying them for well over 30 years. My uh, specialty is the understanding of plant constituents, the chemistry of the oils, with regards to human health and drug development. Um, the reason for that is, is because there are interactions. Um, certain constituents bind to serum albumin. Other ones influence the sulfation pathway. Other ones, and even some of those, inter, um, are metabolized on the CYP450 enzyme. So understanding how to integrate these two worlds is my area of expertise. So like I said, it's really the chemistry of the oils. And, and it's the reason why I am now hosting um, Zoom meetings on Saturdays at 3 o'clock Eastern, um, $20. Check out my events page on synergessence.com. That link is in the description box below to, um, to join in. Um, you get to pick any Saturday that works for you. Um, but what we talk about are things that I feel like it's important for us to know about essential oils and, of course, taking your questions as well. Um, but that said, today I want to, um, I was working on a, um, well, I recently did a a blog post on the clinical consideration of essential oils with regards to cholesterol, narcolepsy, and chronic fatigue. And as a follow-up, I am finishing up one titled a, uh, a formula for weight loss. It's all tied together, which brings me to the point of this video, um, which is something I talk about, mentioned in, in my, um, especially in the last, in this current blog post, uh, formula for weight loss is the uh, link between caffeine, cortisol, and vitamin D. And um, I will get into a little bit here as to how we can begin to um, integrate oils on a generalized level, um, generalized being that they may not be the right selection for you based on any medications that you might be taking. So um, that said, the point, a couple points I want to make here that I've talked about in other videos, but it's kind of bringing it together, is the fact that um, the two most addictive substances on the planet that's basically impacting every single one of us, well, one for sure, the other one 95% of the time, 95% of the time is um, caffeine. It is the most widely consumed addictive substance on the planet. 95% of the population is reported to have to be consuming caffeine on a daily basis. And the reason that's significant, and the reason we talk about it being an addictive substance, I mean, just clarify what addiction actually is, and that is a change to the dopaminergic mesolimbic pathway. That is the structure that is linked to addiction, and when when scientists identify changes to that structure, that's when they will, come, that's when you get the formal diagnosis of addiction. Okay, so in the meantime, there's been changes to the DSM-5 where it's a substance abuse disorder. Okay, we cannot officially diagnose anybody with addiction. We can say they have addictive type behaviors, but we cannot diagnose them with addiction unless they have a brain scan and that indicates changes to the structure. So that is the true definition of addiction. Therefore, if you are being treated for addictive type behaviors, it's for a substance abuse disorder. Um, but that said, caffeine is known to, um, to make changes to that structure and so is cortisol. Um, that's huge. It's very huge, and um, if you haven't been, if you haven't read any of my blog posts, I'm going to invite you to go over and check that out. That link is in the box below as well. It's synergessence.com um, on the ultimate guide. I talk an awful lot about the chemistry of the stress mechanism over there, 
and just to very briefly define it here or to go over it is um, the body cannot differentiate between a potential threat to um, the, it's the physical well-being or um, a perceived threat such as, well, my gosh, what's going to happen to my relationship? What's going to happen to my bank account? Am I going to have my job? You know, those kinds of threats. Um, it, a threat is a threat. Okay, the body cannot differentiate the difference. This is where our mind comes in because we have the ability at that point to begin to regulate our thought process and dial it down a little bit. And it's significant for a number of reasons um, to do that because the environment is threatening the body all on its own with the number of chemicals that we're consistently exposed to as well as viruses and bacteria and so forth and light waves. So all of these things affect us. Um, and so what that does is it um, notifies the DNA, which then begins to release signals. It alters itself. The DNA makes changes to itself with transponal elements, which are segments of the DNA that have the ability to relocate based on the information coming in. And at that point, um, we switch from producing chemicals that help us to thrive to chemicals that help us to survive, otherwise known as oxidative stress, which then leads to inflammation. One of the first rounds of um, chemical changes that occurs is the release of mast cells. And in these mast cells is histamine. And as they begin to circulate, histamine is then released into the system, which then um, signals the need for more cortisol as an anti-inflammatory. So then cortisol is produced at an increasing rate to help counter the histamine levels. From there, aromatase is then produced because aromatase is needed to convert androgens into estrogens. So there's a big change in the hormonal system that's taking place, and now we're producing more estrogen in order to keep the cortisol in check. And so it continues on. Um, cortisol actually helps with the breakdown of um, carbs, proteins, and fats, but under stressful times, that is diminished because the cortisol is being used for other things, okay, and um, other purposes to keep the body amped and going. Uh, again, it's 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 an interesting, very very interesting. So at that point, we no longer break down our macronutrients properly. We have higher levels of um, large particles of food or large part of large nutrient particles floating throughout the system. And guess what that's going to do? it's going to signal a relief, um, the immune system that there's a potential threat in the body because it cannot, again, differentiate the difference between a bacteria, virus, or a large um, nutrient particle, unusable nutrient particle. So now you have an elevated immune reaction, and it becomes this vicious cycle. Now, what's interesting to me is that cortisol, when the adrenals are firing on all it begins to notify um, it, it. Well, let me put it to you this way with the changes of the androgens that are going on and sterile, and it, so it's not just estrogen, it's other sterile hormones, and some of them actually begin to act like the thyroid hormones. Well, one of the thyroid hormones is called calcitonin, and calcitonin is the a hormone, a peptide hormone that begins to signal or, or, or stimulate the parathyroid hormone, okay? And what that's doing is, is that's notifying saying we need more calcium into the bloodstream because calcium is an immune, um, signals immune activity. Over time, we have hardening of the arteries, we have osteoporosis. We have, as we age, we don't have as, you know, our muscle development isn't as good. And what we have is a world of men right now who are going out there, I need more testosterone to build my muscle. Well, no, actually what you need is you need to settle your ass down, ground yourself, literally start to stabilize the stress response. Okay, because when all of this is happening, cortisol also affects the way the VDR, which is the vitamin D receptor, the way the VDR transports vitamin D 
into the deeper into the system. When that's not happening, we have unusable forms of vitamin D circulating throughout the body. Now, here's a very interesting thing, and I wrote about this in this recent post, that the blood serum tests that we're currently taking um, to determine, and right now it's estimated over just over 1 billion people on the planet are registering as deficient in vitamin D. However, the, the acceptable form, the, the acceptable test test the blood serum levels, but that blood serum level does not indicate whether or not the VDR is actually functioning. And cortisol deters or slows, it alters, like I said, it alters, so the transport of vitamin D isn't happening, so we're not actually getting, you know, and vitamin D is responsible for moving calcium into other areas of the body that are beneficial for our health, such as the mineralization of bone. Um, I talk about what to do about calcium in that one, um, but the interesting thing here that I wanted to point out is that caffeine, the consumption of caffeine, jacks our cortisol levels. It triggers the production of cortisol. Now, again, this is very intriguing to me with the number of caffeinated products we have on the market. And when we get into that fatigue, you know, that afternoon slump and, you know, we go for the caffeine, okay? We have obesity on the rise. We have low T on the rise. You know, erectile dysfunction is a problem. Um, hardening, you know, cardiovascular, you know, um, coronary artery disease is a problem. Um, there's a lot of degenerative health issues, and they're all linked to the body's um, poor use of vitamin D. So let me just recap this, okay? Cortisol activates a number of processes. It slows down the transport of vitamin D when it's at an elevated level. It's in, and it, caffeine actually elevates the level. So dr the consumption of caffeine is diminishing our ability to actually use vitamin D. It's actually diminishing our ability to use calcium fully. We're maintaining an elevated, activated stress mechanism and, a, and an immune system on high alert because calcium activates the immune system. We have an increase in autoimmune disorders. Vitamin D is necessary for that. So again, just because we have blood serum tests and you may take one and it may say that you, you know, you're within normal limits, that doesn't mean that your body's actually using vitamin D. It means that there's vitamin D circulating in your blood. That's what it means but it doesn't indicate if the BD VDR is actually working. And I have actually asked several doctors to their faces, this is, you know, this is a blood serum test. How do you know that the body is actually using vitamin D? Because, well, you know, in my case, osteoporosis, um, arthritis, cancer. So you want me to take vitamin D, but how do you know my body's at? And they don't know. They don't know. That's been the answer across the board. We don't know if the body's going to use it. We have no idea of telling if the body is using it. And the thing is, is we can do a genetic test that, you know, a methylation test, and it will test, and it will let you know where your VDR stands, but that's in that moment. We have no idea if this is an ongoing thing, and chances are, you know, it is, but it's, the point is, is that, and somebody said to me the other day, well, how come we all don't get this health condition? Well, it's because there's a number of types of VDRs in, in this case. And so it depends on the epigenome, what your epigenome is interpreting and, and what's been deactivated and what's been activated. It's dependent upon your epigenome's, epigenome's interpretation of the stress information coming in. That's what it comes down to. So there's an inherited genome that we get from our, you know, in our lineage, and this, the signaling of that impacts the signaling of the epigenome. And so all of this is a factor. Okay, so our unique, our response to the world is unique to us. So there's no way of really telling who's going to get what. And so when we talk about vitamin D, there's no really telling how and what illness anybody is going to develop. But the bottom line is the blood serum tests that we're taking right now 
does do not indicate whether or not the body is actually using vitamin D. If you have a health condition, you're not using it, hands down. Obesity, fat tissue, adipose tissue is part of the endocrine system. Um, bone marrow is part of the endocrine system. Um, we don't need to be taking more calcium supplements. It's been proven that just taking a calcium supplement does not, you know, does not benefit the body. Okay, because like I said, the calcitonin is used to signal the, pituit, um, the parathyroid hormone to begin to, to release, to, um, I want to say almost extract calcium from the bones and the muscles in order to be used for other purposes. And like I said, part of that is the activation of the immune system because the, cal the cortisol has notified him of this. We would think that if we took a calcium supplement, we would be maintaining a blood serum test or blood serum level that would protect the body, so to speak, from extracting that calcium from the bones and the muscles. But what's, what research is showing is that's not the case at all. We're just adding calcium to the body and it's increasing our chances of coronary artery disease, gallstones, kidney stones, and so forth. So taking a calcium supplement isn't the answer. We get plenty of calcium in our diet. The challenge that we face is helping our body actually utilize vitamin D. That's the key right there, is getting the body to use vitamin D. Because once the body can actually transport vitamin D, at that point, your body's beginning to use calcium at a much better level. And part of that is we got to get off this caffeine. I had a client, you know, it, her husband is just... He, he goes batshit crazy with caffeinated drinks when he starts to get tired. And it's affected, it's affected his, his sex, sexual drive. Um, he gets headaches all the time. You know, he's consistently fatigued unless he keeps himself jacked. Well, there's a sign right there of an addictive type behavior. Okay. But the thing is, is that consistent caffeine is keeping his cortisol levels up. So any vitamin D that he's taking isn't doing him any good. It's just getting stored in the fat tissue. It's not being utilized. So yes, we have lots of products out there that encourage us to take them because they keep us, you know, going. There's, I mean, caffeine is considered a um, nutrient by the FDA, so it's safe for consumption. Yes, there are some that have outrageous amounts of caffeine in it, but caffeine's been added to a lot of different things. We've got to pay attention to the calcium fortified foods. Try to get away from that. Get away from as much caffeine as possible. You know, I don't have a problem with one cup of coffee a day, and I'm not going to tell you what to do. What I'm saying is begin to self regulate, you know, through checking your mind and your emotions and paying attention to what you're consuming. If, in fact, you know, you would like to see yourself lose weight. Um, improve your health, improve your bone density. It's learning to dial it in. You know, I used, to, yeah. Um, it's somebody, somebody once said that, you know, drinking diet sodas was bad for bone. Well, it's bad for bone in the sense that it's got caffeine in it. And it's causing cortisol to signal the, the release of uh, the, the, signaling the body to pull calcium from the bones. That's significant right there. So I would, that's one of the, you know, some of the first things I would start with. I would go into, as far as oils are concerned, like I said, I would give you a few generalized um, suggestions here. I'm going to qualify this by saying you want to make sure that you're not taking any medications if you, you know, to go into use these. If you do take medications, then I highly encourage you to get with me for a consult, you know, so that way I can guide you into a more specific selection of oils that are better for choices for your body. But the whole point here is to improve digestion and the use of cholesterol, number one. And number two Stabilize that hormonal system. Lower your cortisol levels. Okay. Work really diligently to low, keep your cortisol levels, you know, 
as much in check as possible. Therefore, I strongly encourage the use of ashwagandha on a daily basis. Oils that you could use would be holy basil and black spruce. bitter orange and a lemmy. Those would be my suggestions to begin to improve the body's use of vitamin D. But that said, I mean, there's other oil suggestions on this blog post and you're welcome to check those out. But if you take medications, then none of those are going to work for you. And for the reasons I cited earlier, potential interactions. So, um, that's it for right now. So get on with your digestion. Oh, um, I, there are suggestions in that blog post, but you want to make, you know, for how to handle your digestion. Um, and um, I would suggest more than using more than just this for oils. But um, for the, in the meantime, for this, for the purpose of this video, I'm going to leave it there. All right. So let me know if you have any questions. I appreciate you being here. And thanks very much for being here again. Um, let me know it, what you might like to hear about. And please consider joining me on Zoom. All right. Take care.